Today, we're gonna to be talking about rear wheel steering and specifically rear wheel steering systems that affect your handling. Now, a lot of people probably think that rear steering or turning the rear wheels of the car is to do with parking and getting a better turning circle and turning it into corners with a better turning circle as well. But in reality, that's not really the case. Now, a lot more cars now, higher end cars, are starting to use rear steering for performance applications. So a good example of this is the new 911 uses it on the back end. And people talk about how this enhances the stability in high speed corners, but also improves the handling in low speed corners. And today we're gonna to talk about what that actually means. Now, if you've watched my video on Ackman steering, you'll know that the your inertia and getting a good yaw moment into a corner is most important when you're going into low speed corners. Now, if we just have a car with only the front wheel steering, the only way we can get a yaw moment is by having a difference in the force between the front axle and the rear axle. Now, when we turn in normally, we just apply a force on the front axle, no force on the rear axle because we're just turning the steering wheel, and then that will give us our moment, pull us in, and then we'll go into the corner. The problem with that is, is that there's a, a considerable period of time where the rear wheels, if they were going straight, would not be at any notable slip angles. They wouldn't be providing good traction. So what we can do instead is shorten the time that it takes to yaw into the corner. And this will also give us a better driver feel of transient response because the car will rotate faster. Now, how do we do that? Well, if we assume that each tire or each axle has a certain level of maximal grip, we can see that normally, if we weren't using rear steering, this front axle would be turning into a corner at its maximum level of grip for the fastest turning. But what we can do is we can actually have the rear axle turn out as far as possible to get the maximum level of grip out of the corner. Now, that doesn't seem to make sense from a steady state point of view, because why would you want grip out of your corner? But if you're just trying to get your car rotated more, if your yaw inertia is more dominant than your absolute lateral grip, then you want to get it around as fast as possible. So we turn it out and we get a force here. So we can now see that we now have double the torque around the center, so the car will turn in twice as fast because it has double the yaw acceleration. So there's a substantial benefit here. And then once we've turned it into the corner, we can turn these wheels back a bit, get that slip angle back to more where we want it to be, and regain our grip on the rear axle, and thus have ultimate cornering grip for our full corner. Now at higher speeds, it's said that the system gives you more stability. And the question is whether it's giving you more stability or more perceived stability. A lot of the perception of how your car is handling is to do with your total chassis slip angle, whether your car is pointing into the corner or out of the corner. That is what will kind of give you your initial sense of whether the car is feeling understeery or oversteery. Now, if we imagine our car is turning with around a big radius corner, and we've got some degree of chassis slip angle. So if we were running a non rear wheel steer car, the whole chassis would be pointing inward slightly. So our corner would be like that and our car would be pointing in. So there's our wheels there and that's how we're getting all our lateral force that way off those tires. So the car's pointing into the corner. Now this is gonna feel a little bit oversteery. But what you can do instead is the driver's naturally gonna to wanna to have their steering wheel turned in on the corner. Like in this scenario, you would still be doing a perfect corner, but you'd be doing in what people would feel as a four wheel slide because the steering wheel would be straight, even though it would be fine for a steady state corner. So if you imagine these wheels are turned in like this, then if we want the rears to be operating a similar slip angle, we turn the rears in as well. Reimagine that on the corner. And we can now see that if we have a corner like that, and we have our car now straight, so with zero chassis slip angle, we can turn our front wheels in and we can turn our rear wheels in. And now we have a car that's cornering in exactly the same condition, but the car is now pointing at a different direction. So this is just one thing that you can do with the four wheel steer to change the driver perception of how the car is behaving to give it the feeling of stability, even though you haven't really changed that much. And this really comes into the same thing as what I was talking about here. You can use the rear steering, back it off to give you that initial yaw inertia change. So the rear wheels would be straight in a higher speed corner because obviously if you turn them out in a higher speed corner, the slip angle gain would be so high, 
your urinalia would just probably cause you to spin out. So you keep them straight, you turn in, then once the car is turned in, you tell your steering system to turn the rear wheels in as well, then you have maximum lateral grip, you corner, as you turn out, you leave the rear wheels turned in, so the front wheels turn out, it will straighten out, the rear wheels then can straighten out, and you've got really good stability characteristics while still maintaining very sharp handling and good agility into lower speed corners. So that's how four wheel steering works for performance applications. Thanks for watching. If you like, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hopefully see you next time.